And you know, another big public project for us that we really kind of built up to in 2018, but will really kind of kick off in 2019, um, that maybe people don't know a ton about is our fiber infrastructure project. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you know, we could spend a whole a Breck Buzz episode <laughs> yes, we talking about fiber, and I'm sure we will as, as we move farther into uh, 2019. But, you know, this is another one of those things that, you know, we just talked about water as a utility and how important it is to the community, and uh, it's just like electricity and water. Well, the ability for people to connect, the ability to get internet, um, and good internet at a high speed and you know and not be bogged down every time we have a busy weekend it is something that I think even our community says that's an important utility and an amenity that this town needs and so the shift of what you're starting to see is you're starting to see municipalities say you know we're gonna lay the backbone of fiber. We're mm -hmm. going to put this in the ground and we're going to make that available uh, to the community. And so the town has really, you know, taken that stance and said, we're going to go in and invest money in laying a broadband, uh, a fiber cable throughout, mm -hmm. kind of around the core of town. We're calling that the kind of the backbone. And then off of that, off of that circle, if you will, will be lines that go up into neighborhoods uh, and you know that will strategically expand into those neighborhoods uh, based on density of the neighborhood and a willingness for people that want to connect to this service and so we're in the process right now we've been in a design phase for the last most of 2018 and working with an outside consultant to mm -hmm. really design the build of the fiber network uh, now we are in the process of identifying um, service providers that will, it, it's going to be what's called an open access network. So you may have, you know, two or more service providers that any customer could reach out to based on what they offer and the pricing, et cetera. But, you know, the outcome that we're looking for and we expect our hope is to have some neighborhoods and homes that are able to go live by the end of 2019 is that you could get, you know, up to a gig of service, yeah. which nobody is getting. Right, right. Um, you know, probably at a cost that's comparable to what somebody is already paying for certainly a much less service. Um, and we we all hear the horror stories of what we have, but yes. we think this is is a great thing. It's it's proven in other areas, and so we're really excited um, to be out there. Yeah, and you're right. We will have to do a whole segment on it because there is a lot of finer points and questions, and um, maybe some myths to be dispelled. But um, you know, I think it is like you said. It, it is like water, and it's kind of setting ourselves up for the future and making sure that as technology grows, we are you know keeping right up with everything that happens. Yeah, and, and it'll be it's, it'll be a disruption, right? Any right. time you have construction, it's a it's a disruption, but generally, uh, as much as possible, we'll be off of a roadway. We'll try, we will bury the cable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really a conduit, uh, a con conduit pipe that we bury, uh, and it's down a couple of feet underground, and then the cable is pulled through that conduit. Where we can, we'll uh, bury it in a right of way next to a roadway so that we're not actually digging in a roadway. Right. Um, but we'll move along in different areas and we'll always try to keep the ability for traffic to move through those areas uh, whenever possible and minimize the disruption. But uh, I think it's a good thing that we, we don't have a lot of overhead power lines in the town. We've really tried mm -hmm. to bury a lot of those lines and so we'll be burying uh, this cable too because it certainly uh, protects it much better. Definitely.